Hey guys, uh, this is just a little fast castle for China, um, build order alteration, I guess. Uh, I'm basing this off of a build order video I saw by Hupsaya. Um, I'll put that link in the description for his video. Um, it's basically the exact same, but I really think that instead of building two barracks, you can go Imperial Officer as you're aging up to castle. And then one barracks can produce th as much as three barracks. And it's actually cheaper because you're spending 100 food and 150 wood for what is essentially 450 wood worth of production structures. And the wood saved is kind of a big deal because it means you can get your blacksmith out earlier. Which then leads you to getting the archer armor upgrade earlier. Which can make a big difference when you're fighting against longbowmen. So, uh, pretty... Pretty standard um, compared to Hupsai's video. Um, I get the first sheep like he does. I send my scout around to pick up some more sheep. I'm going to drop them off at the berries uh, in preparation for the mill. So I build the mill with this villager. Uh, also, just just to just to preface this, uh, Hupsai is like way higher elo than I am, um, so I'm sure he knows. Uh, what he's talking about um, if you want to follow his build order instead go for it uh, but I just want to say that in his video he has about five palace guard at uh, nine minutes um, as the enemy starts attacking him um, in my build order I was able to get and he wasn't he wasn't harassed until that enemy showed up in my build order I'm able to get I think I have nine palace guard out by nine minutes no, maybe a, little, maybe a little bit later. So maybe it's, maybe it was like 6 to 9, maybe. But I think I think the main thing is is that the Imperial Official lets you supervise your gold mine. I, I, I screwed this up here, but I'll explain it later. Um, if you build a barracks next to your Barbican and next to your gold mine, you can actually have the Imperial Official swap between the two. Um, so if you aren't doing anything with your barracks for some reason at that moment in time, you can swap to the... Um, the gold, the gold mine instead to supervise that and get the twenty percent extra gold, which also means you get more gold out of your gold mine before you have to move someplace else, which is quite nice, because then you're not under the protection of the barbican anymore. Uh, okay. I even, I even screw up a little bit. I actually, I screw up quite a bit to be honest with you. Um, I think I send too many villagers here off of this sheep. I select all six by accident. I should have selected only four. Um, four or five. I send one back to keep going on that, so that's wasted time right there. Uh, you should be scouting all the time, but uh, obviously I am slow. Which goes to show how fast this castle age can be, considering like how many mistakes I made. <laughs> So you build the house when you're pop cap. Since China builds faster, you don't need to build your house sooner. You can just build it with the villager that pop caps you. One giant. So I think. If you max off your drop offs at the mill. You could probably send your villager to wood first instead of the gold mine. But I send a villager to gold first, and then I put one on the wood. So one thing that a, a lot of people, um, maybe not a lot of people, but I know some people don't realize is that every time you force drop off, it gives you tax. Like right there, I just force drop off with all eight of my villagers, which then let me get 19 gold from my supervisor or my imperial official. So you can do those force drop offs frequently. And it'll let you get, like, any any time the cooldown is f for the mill is up, force drop off, grab the gold, put it in. Because the time, the time you lose for taking your villagers off the food to do the force drop off, it's, it's really not that much. Another force drop off. Oh, one thing to note, um, to make this easier, turn off automatic tax collection so your Imperial official doesn't walk around like a crazy man. Um, 
and also you can queue up commands so if you if you right click to collect taxes and then you right click on the town center and then you hold shift and then press E to supervise while he's walking to the town center um, you can queue up that supervise command so that once he's done at the town center he can automatically he'll automatically walk back to the mill also another reason you want to force drop off is because you don't it, you don't get that 20% supervised bonus if he's not supervising the mill so you lose out on food by forcing the drop off before you go to get tax before you get the taxes it means your villagers won't miss any of the bonus from supervising because they won't uh, don't have food to drop off while he's turning the taxes in So I hit the age up gold at 246. Um, I had to, uh, what's it called? I had to force drop off with my gold miners, but that's not a big deal. So I put the barbican down next to the gold mine, like most people do. Also, just a little, a uh, little fast forward. I do, um, I start falling behind on gold compared to my food production here, and I think that's one because I stopped doing the force drop off. Um, I think that force drop off can make you more gold than you realize uh, if you automate, if you force the drop off and then start collecting taxes on cooldown. I stopped doing that about this time, uh, and I think that would have definitely helped me get to castle even faster. I could I could have kept more villagers on food. Also, right here, I I already have enough villagers on food here. I should have sent more to to gold here. Um, I have enough wood for my second house now. I should build that any second. There it is. Uh, and then I think I rally another villager on wood here. I'm pretty sure. I, sh I, sh I shouldn't be doing 13 on food here. This is this is overkill. And you, you'll see me transfer villagers around because I because I, I know I'm doing overkill on food. Also, I could be collecting tax. Yeah, there we go. Have some idle time here, but not too long. Cause I didn't shift queue that up. See, I realize I realized right there that I was falling behind on gold, so I start sending him over there. I also realize that I won't have enough wood for the barracks, so I queue up the wood here. So I mean, I, I only watched Hoop's eyes video like twice, I think, the build order twice. So I'm definitely screwing up in some places, but like just to, it, it it's it just enforces or reinforces like how incredibly fast this castle age is. Um, because even with my mistakes, I still hit castle uh, <laughs> very fast. So here I'm, I'm way too ahead. Uh, I should you should always have like 50 50. So this if this is 800, this should be 400. So I'm way ahead on food right now, um, which I realize. And I think I transfer three from food to gold in a second here. Yeah, I do it right now. I also could be collecting taxes. I think. Oh wait, no, it must have been cooldown. I get the lumber camp up. And then because because I'm falling behind on gold, I actually stop supervising the mill and I collect uh, taxes on the mine to pick up an extra 20 gold here. Nice. Then I'm putting villagers on wood here because I realize that I'm going to need uh, what's it called? I'm gonna need enough wood for the barracks soon. So I'm at 99 now. I should have enough soon. Um, I think I, I do a force drop off here for the gold to get enough for castle age. There we 
go. Then I grab five villagers, I think, to build the clock tower. Now here, what you could do is what you could do that I don't. You could totally take like two of these gold villagers, um, and send them to food instead, because you you don't need a nine to five split for men at arms or palace guard. You definitely want like like a five to one split, you know? It's a hundred food and twenty gold, so you don't need that much gold. You need a ton of food. Um, so I could have sent some of these gold villagers back to food, and here here's here's where I make one mistake, which um. I don't think it would affect your timings at all. It would just affect the efficiency of the Imperial Officer. So don't do right here. I sent a villager to build a barracks here. What I should have done is I should have had one of the gold villagers build the barracks next to the Barbican. That was my mistake. Um, it doesn't matter in terms of like the build order. Like you should do this. But I would 100% use the gold villager and then build the barracks right next to the mining camp near the Barbican. Because this way the Imperial Officer can stand right here. Or you can have him stand next to the Barbican even. Uh, and he can swap between supervising the Barbican and supervising the gold of the mining camp. Which also is kind of nice because when you eventually do get tech upgrades, you can supervise the mining camp and this will research 200% faster. So there's also time saved on uh, eco upgrades. Oh, actually, yeah, here did do that <laughs> so a little later a little later but yeah I, def I, s I realize that I don't need this much gold so I take two villagers and I send them to food okay also a thing to note here is um you want that imperial official to be done when you hit castle age so if if you really wanted that imperial official, I could you I you could cancel this villager. Um, I didn't because uh, I didn't think that that many like that like you're gonna lose like maybe twelve seconds of production time. Because I think this villager finishes. I hit castle age and then it's twenty seconds for the imperial officer, so you'll be behind maybe one palace guard, but. At this point in time, you can't actually produce Palace Guard fast enough to meet the... Sorry. You're not gathering resources fast enough to meet the speed a supervised barracks has. So getting the Imperial Official out a teensy bit late isn't that big of a deal. You could have, you could have palace guard queued right now. Um, I was waiting for my imperial fish to finish, but it's not really a big deal. So around like 7:25, not 7:25. So I hit castle at like 7:23, and around 7:30, you could have your first, you know, um, what's it called going out. And also by building this imperial official instead, you can have more people on food, less on wood. And then that wood savings can go into a, a blacksmith instead. So I think a blacksmith is 150. Yeah. So I have to build a house here, unfortunately. But uh, see, I'm, I'm, I'm even kind of slow. I'm not actually having 100% uptime on the palace guards. But what's nice about that is because even if, even if you're losing out, if you lose out on your micro because you're not uh, like I, I didn't even hockey my barracks. I could have hockey my barracks. I could have hockeyed my Imperial official too. Um, I also haven't collected taxes from my mill in a hot second. <laughs> I think. So, you could hotkey all of this stuff for better timing, for a better micro. And even if you lose out on micro with Palace Guard, because your Imperial official makes them produce so fast, and you don't have enough food to meet that production, you actually can like if, if you for, if you stop producing palace guard for like uh you know five or six seconds it's not that big of a deal with this setup because you'll catch up to your food production regardless now i can build a bear now i can build a blacksmith 
I think I do that, but I'm just a little slow. There's the blacksmith. I could have built that blacksmith earlier, and I have enough gold um, between the blacksmith to. Uh, what's it called? I have enough gold now to just instantly get the uh, archer armor tech. If you're facing English, I would definitely get this. Honestly, I would get archer armor tech most of the time. Because against Royal Knights, you're probably going to want, uh... I don't even know what you would want against Royal Knights, to be honest with you. Probably just... I don't know. Because none, none of these upgrades really matter against Royal Knights. They do so much damage and take so little. So anyway, we're at 9-10 here. Um... Okay, so at 9-12, I have 9 Palace Guard built. So at, let's see here. General Porsche season. Yeah, so and then at, at nine, Kind of hard to tell because of the camera. But at 9 minutes and 13 seconds, I think Upside has got like maybe 6 Palace Guard here. Um, And he also has 500, 500 wood. Um, But I mean, he's obviously in a PvP match. This is just me versus the easy AI. Uh, and he was under harassment, so villager, uh, microing your villager resources obviously is entirely different when you're under pressure. Um, but I really do think that this build is incredibly, is, is really, really good, uh, cause it saves you, cause once, once your, once your food production keeps ramping up as you build more and more villagers, you're already producing as if you had three blacks or three barrackses. Is that how you say it? Barrackses? Pl the plural? I don't know. But it's already like you have three barracks. Um, so you don't need to spend 450 wood. You just need to spend 150 wood and 150 food. And then you can, after after you have this many palace guard out, you can start asserting map control for sacred sites, relics, your hunts, all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, and I do want to say thank you, Hapsaya, because I was using a different Castle Age build order that was a lot more micro-intensive. And I was actually getting slower castle times. <laughs> My castle age time uh, was usually around 750. Uh, doing Hupsai's version, I got it 30 seconds faster than I usually do. And that was even with me messing up. So I think Hupsai's initial build order is great. And it's really simple. And um, very easy to follow. Uh, my, only, my only change was I like having the second Imperial official out. Uh, and just remember that... You can, you can actually do both ways. If you put him next to the gold mine to supervise the gold mine, um, it requires more micromanagement because whenever you're not building, you're going to want to supervise the gold mine for drop-offs. But if you want less micro-intensive, put the barracks next to your town center, and then whenever you have 20 gold in the barracks from creating units, you can actually pick up the gold with the supervising guy and drop it off immediately in the town center without having to move. Um, which then pays for the gold of your next minute arms. So this actually does work in a way if you don't want to worry about swapping between the mining camp and the barracks with your palace guard. And being next to your town center, your your uh, imperial official is probably safer than being next to the Barbican. So uh yeah. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. Bye bye.